Welcome back folks, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're here with part two of our budget build series. This one is around Esper, Dance of the Man's Doom Foretold. So we've already put out the budget version, it was a strict bl black white uh, Doom Foretold list. Uh, so with this uh, mid-budget list we're adding about 10 or so rares. Uh, we're also looking to leverage, same as the other one, as many of the free cards that we normally get um, as part of the uh, new player experience decks. Uh, so following this we'll do a fully tuned uh, Esper uh, stacks, Dance of the Mans, whatever you want to call it list. Um, so the whole point of these deck series is to kind of guide you along the way in terms of building these decks. Starting from like a low budget, adding cards along the way to get to the ultimate list. So this list here, we add about 10 or so rares. The main thing is we do is we have a light blue splash for Dance of the Mans which is really the payoff card and what we kind of lacked from like that recursive combo element of it. Um, so to walk you through, we still have Duress. Um, if we had more consistency with blue, we'd play Thought Erasure, um, but I like just having the Duress for the time being. Uh, we still have Orzhov Enforcer, which was actually really good in the black-white Tomb Foretold list. Um, it effectively being two bodies, but also a Death Toucher early on was a way to kind of pressure the opponent. Uh, we still have our Cyclers in Golden Egg and Guild Globe. Um, in the black white version, they pretty much just read draw a card. Uh, in this version here, in the event we don't have blue mana, they can be sacrificed to fix our mana, which is a nice kind of benefit in that case. Uh, we have Dance of the Mance, which is the namesake of the deck. Uh, so pay X into the blue white casting cost, return up to X target artifacts or non or enchantments, each with converted cost X or less. If X is six or more, those permanents uh, basically become four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So what you're able to do is sack all these cyclers to Doom Foretold, and then bring them all back, redraw a whole bunch of cards, and then hopefully make a bunch of four, fours to kill your opponent. We added in Murderous Rider instead of the Mortify Plaguecrafter. Uh, Murderous Rider deals with Planeswalkers cleanly. It's the way that shuffles back into our library. Um, and it is a lifelinker, which can be relevant in the aggressive matchups. I uh, still have one Mortify main. Um, so because we're not playing to fairies in this particular build due to budget constraints still, um, do, having an answer to Fires of Invention main is important in, in my opinion. Uh, we're adding in three Othakayas. So this is removal, extra reach, life gain. And when you get multiples, you can have them all enter the graveyard, bring them back, and it's kind of like a cycle to repeat that process. We're still playing the one uh, free Seraph of the Scales. Uh, this was actually pretty good in the games we played. Probably wouldn't want more than the one, um, but the fact we could sack it to Doom Foretold and still get the tokens afterwards, plus just being a Death Touch body is relevant against a lot of the big green creatures. Uh, four Bell Haunts still, um, just based on the fact we don't have the full mana base uh, to support Teferi, stuff like that. Uh, it's a way to kind of impede the opponent while gaining his life in the aggressive matchups. Uh, the Doom Foretolds, which is a namesake, the other namesake card. Uh, basically, on the beginning of each player's upkeep, they sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent. Uh, if the player can't, they discard a card, they lose two life, and you draw a card, uh, and you create a token, and sack Doom Foretold. So this is kind of the engine to get these cheaper things into our graveyard. I did go up one Kaya's Wrath, so we're playing three Kaya's Wrath, no cry in the main now. Uh, mana base-wise, I added in... A full play set of Temple of Silence, we were playing two before. Um, and then I added in, you should be getting one free Hallow Fountain and one Watery Grave as part of the new player experience uh, decks. And then all I did was add in some Tranquil Coves and some uh, Dismal Backwaters. So they do give us life, which is nice against the aggressive matchups. We do want to go longer. Um, them coming in tapped and it reduces our consistency a bit. So we're hopefully going to drop these on turn one and then be able to play our spells as normal. Um, basically, you're looking at Guided Passage in the normal mat, uh, deck list. You have uh, more of the Shock Lands as well. Uh, Sideboard-wise, it's pretty much identical to what we were playing. I just added in one Legion's End uh, because Golos is everywhere, and then two Dovin's Veto as well. Um, we have a Light Blue Splash, so we can support the counter spell now. So that's pretty much the list. Um, as always with these lists, I will play uh, at least a best of three. And then we'll do some uh, best of one, so you get a feel of the deck in both components. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to rank up right now, so I'm probably just going to run it through regular. Um, I'm unfamiliar with this deck uh, to begin with, 
So let's just do some normal play. If we find that it is uh, able to take down some games, we will move to ranked with it and go from there. Um, so when I'm done this version, I'll be playing the non-budget version, and then from there we will move into um, a full write-up on Aetherhub. So I've already did it for Golos Field, so if that's a deck you're interested in playing, I've already done this full budget build series. Um, all the deck lists, everything can be found on Aetherhub, and then all the videos are on my YouTube channel. As always, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to drop a follow on Twitch or a subscribe on YouTube. Uh, both are free and easy ways to help out. And finally, if you are purchasing physical cards off TCG Player, do have an affiliate link in the video description on YouTube. Uh, if you follow that link, do with your normal purchase. Just let them know that you came from my channel, and it's a free and easy way, again, to help out. Um, so I think we don't need white mana right now, so I'll probably lead on the temple. We got a bunch of cyclers, which is nice, so that should draw us. I don't want any more land. We're likely to draw into it. Uh, one other thing I'm going to be doing is on my uh, YouTube, I will, in the community section, that's actually a very good draw. Um, doesn't really matter what we lead with. Uh, I'll be putting a post uh, for kind of viewer submitted decks, if you will. Um, so looking to see uh, if there's any kind of off brews that you're interested or you've been playing a lot of. Ooh, that is not good. Okay, so I think we do need to, so we're kind of stuck. We're taking a big chunk of damage here. I'm going to gain the three life this turn. Uh, we need the second block, so I have to go temple here. Okay, Doom Foretold after a board wipe will be pretty good. Um, I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm going to gain three life off the golden egg. <clears throat> so hopefully they don't have uh, the Great Henge. So this is an instance where mana base is kind of impacting us. So they hit us for 11. So we're just going to pop this, gain some life. And yeah, I think we just Kaya's Wrath here. We have both Akaya for smaller stuff. If they do, we can Doom Foretold what they have. Okay, so they don't have that going, so... I think we just Bell Haunt here. Forces something out of their hand. And then next turn we can uh, double Guild Globe. Okay, so they have the removal. It's fine. So let's Guild Globe first. That gets us our land. We Oath of Kai as the Murderous Rider. And now we've done a pretty good job of controlling their board. We could set up the Doom Foretold lock now um, with the artifacts so we have a couple things we can sack uh and it kind of locks them out at that point yeah so the writing's on the wall there we did a pretty good job just kind of locking them down um in this matchup it's green based so we want the noxious uh do we want the noxious grasps um that's a good question actually so we could get rid of these duresses bring in the devout decrees Uh, I think we bring in two Noxious Grasps. This is actually pretty good against the Death Touchers. Otherwise, they'll probably have Assassin's Trophy. We might want to Spark as well. Maybe shave down a couple Bell Haunts, bring in a couple to Sparks. Go from there. We didn't see much from the green. Like, I'm guessing they're playing Questing Beast. Um, but between Murderous Rider, uh, 
like just all that removal shouldn't be an issue and we're not as concerned with taking a hit or two what we need to try to do is avoid like the early like turn three um what's his name rotting registrar into the great henge we'll keep this hand against an aggressive drop we have the orzov enforcer Um, I think we're likely to draw into more. Like, I'm just going to drop the Enforcer. And if they want to attack with Knights, they have to deal with the Death Touch. So at least this way it trades and gives us two blockers. Next turn I'll set up a Golden Egg. If we need to Mortify, we have that option. Nebraska. Your life's about to end. Hope you're ready. Oh, they go for the sacrifice. So I'm just gonna dispark this. That actually works out pretty well. Nebraska's troublesome because it doesn't let us set up our lock pieces. Um, so here I could take some damage. I think we wait one more turn. Let's get this going. And then drop another enforcer down. Kind of want to see a Kai's Wrath. Like they could trample over, but they're a little stuck on mana. And then we can't play multiple spells per turn just yet. Okay, so they murder Strider. So let's get rid of Ceratops here. That's a fair trade in my opinion. And this why I'd like these enforcers. So we have the Dispark. Uh, let's set up Doom Foretold. And just drop down the Cove. No attacks here. They'll have to sack the Druid. And then next turn I can drop down a Golden Egg which buys us another turn. This takes them off the mana which they were struggling on. Just throw the blocks here. Uh, we'll get rid of the Guild Globe. Sweet. We have Kaya's Wrath. So we can Kaya's Wrath now. Which we probably do. It sets us up pretty well. Or get them to commit one more turn? Uh, that's a good question. We don't have... Yeah, let's do this. It gets us an attacker. And then it draws us a card. And they have to discard, so... Kind of affects the board in a positive way. Sweet. 1-0, 1-0. One without ever attacking. Run it back for one more. And then we'll go to best of one, see how it plays out there. So Teferi does play a big roll and just kind of resetting ourselves so this hand's not going to do much we can keep this hand um i think we probably 
Only want one duress. Uh, let's duress on one. At least to know what we're playing against. Okay, so this is Black Red Aristocrats. So I'm actually going to get rid of the oven here because they have the cauldron familiar. I kind of actually wish we kept both duresses now. Um, they do have the option. If they want, they can go Angrass Rampage. Otherwise, they can go Swamp, uh, play the cat, light up the stage. So they could get a couple spells out that way. That looks like what they're going to be doing. like to draw something other than just lands. That's fine. At the very least it cycles. Gives us something for Doom Foretold. They also just hit lands. So next turn I can Guild Globe. Hopefully start coming close to finding a Doom Foretold and lock them that way. Both the Kaya would also be good. Kaya's Wrath would be good. We need to get rid of this Rankle. Mind you, the Sacrifice doesn't really hurt us that much. Because we got multiple bodies here. Um, let's Cycle first. Okay, Bell Haunt. So they can go Rankle here. Um, so let's hide the fact we have White right now. Um, I'm just going to hold back. We likely don't win this game kind of trading with these Cauldron Familiars. So they may make a sack here, which I'm fine with because it gets us a Flying Blocker. I'm going to discard the Hallowed Fountain. So in retrospect, we probably should have played the Fountain. But this does buy us a blocker for next turn. Okay, sweet. We got Doom Foretold. Um, we, could, we got a free attack here. They're going to sack their cat. So they go full price, light up the stage. get a block source they can play out this gutter bones which gives them another turn without rankle so I'm actually gonna sacrifice this to block the rankle <clears throat> sweet Othakaya um, they can Angras Fury so let's go Bell Haunt here Because they could have killed our flyer, that's why we did that approach. Okay. 
So we'll take the block here, same. So they go Midnight Reaper. I'm gonna sack the Guild Globe. Okay, so we have Murderous Rider. Um, here I'm gonna get rid of the Midnight Reaper. They will get to draw a card. But this forces them to sack the Rankle. So we'll take a couple points of damage here. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna have to murder Strider the Chandra. Uh, so let's get rid of Uthakaya. <clears throat> we get a land. Just hit Chandra. We're just playing out our lands. We've seen that the opponent does have forms of discard uh, through Rankle. So if they get a Rankle off the top. <clears throat> so now's the point where we kind of have them locked. They sack these. Uh, Mayhem Devil's kind of bad. Uh, so let's sack Bell Hunt. They deal some damage to us. Um, so I can Murderous Rider here, but I think we just Bell Hunt again. So the problem is they sack the Gutter Bones, they get back the other Gutter Bones, so they kind of have us in a lock. <clears throat> mm, yeah, probably still go Bell Hunt. Gains us a bit more life. <clears throat> so we do need a removal spell for this Mayhem Devil. Some Guild Globes would be good. Yeah, they could play out two of these. Bit troublesome. Perfect. This lets us pop the Doom Foretold. Drawing another land's not exactly what we want. So we got a Guild Globe, an Oath, and a Doom Foretold. So Dance of the Mance isn't too So we'll just set these up. So that puts us in a pretty good spot. So the opponent claimed to the firstborn dust so that they could get back their gutter bones. We can also sack these eggs to gain some life if need be. Okay, so they have murderous rider. So that'll give them some card draw. Just pass the turn. No blocks here. Okay, so we have Kaya's Wrath, which I don't think we want to be doing right now. Let's get rid of the Midnight Reaper. It just refills their hand and we don't have as much going on. And we'll just drop out this Murderous Rider. I'm fine to trade with one of these. Probably a shock, but we'll take the life gain. Okay, so a mask of immolation. Which if they're doing all that, 
it's fine because they don't have a board state. This goes back into our library. So Dance of the Mance is good for us here. Couple Guild Globes, not the worst. Just more lands. So we're playing out our lands because Dance gets better the more we, we play. And we can cycle through these by gaining different colors to put them in our graveyard. Opponents also kind of digging for some action. We have a Kai's Wrath to get us going. They're still only dealing one per turn. So not the end of the world. Okay, well, we're drawing all our golden eggs. Doom foretold or dance for the mats. Perfect. Um, so one, two, so we're short this turn, so we're just gonna wait this turn and then set it up for next turn. <clears throat> I'm just gonna gain three life this turn off one of these. Actually, I could do it off two of them. So that's fine, we'll just do that. So they can get their stuff back, but not the end of the world. Because the problem is, even with Kai's Wrath, they could have just sacked to bounce them. And a priest. So let's sack to gain some life. Sack to gain some life. Okay, so... Let's do... Blue, white. And then... Uh, we'll add just a blue to sack this. It basically just filters. So x equals 6. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to get rid of probably the priest. So we draw a bunch of cards. Get rid of priest. So we hit all our lands. And the opponent needs basically a board wipe, but we pretty much have them locked. And that's this is the essence of the deck, what you're hoping to achieve. Uh, locking your opponent out via the dance for the man's combo. So opponent GG's us. So that was game one. This is Rakdos. So Cry Carnarium's good. The Legion's End's good. The Devout Decrees are good. Um, to rest, we could probably cut. And they'll basically, they won't really attack us. This is more for the Golos matchup to get rid of Doom Foretold. Um, Doom Foretold might be a little iffy to be honest. Maybe, no, probably keep it the same. These at least do some stuff early, Cry is another spell. Can probably shave a Bell Haunt or two. This just forces so they can't attack us as profitably and it's a buffer against life gain. Try it like that. So this is the mid-budget version. We splashed uh, a little bit of blue 
added about 10 or so rares to our budget version. Uh, we'll be building up onto this as we continue. Uh, we'll keep this hand. Othakaya into Basilica Belhaunt strong. Okay, so this game they have the oven down. Of note, that gets rid of enchantments, not artifacts. So if they have the cat, that's a way for them to drain us. Okay, so let's go temple here. Want to see a doom foretold? Uh, I think revenge is fine. It's a nice follow-up play. So they do have alternative ways between the oven and... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Mayhem Devil? Yeah, so they got the cat combo going already. Um, so the problem is with Othakaya, they... So there's no... Um... I think we could respond. Okay, so they don't activate it. Because the problem is with Othakaya, they would um, sack in response. Hey Quantum, how's it going? Um, the cat they sack anyways. So let's hold this till the end. We're only taking two points of damage. Not too worried. Second cauldron familiar. So this forces them if they want to get it. Have you tried Revenge of the Ravens? As long as they don't have Teferi out, it does something. But I too have given in to the Golos life. Um, let's just get this going. They basically take three damage if they want to attack us this turn. So it's a good way to kind of lock them that way. Okay, so they have Rankle, so that's a good target for the Othakaya. They likely just force us to discard. That's what I play in the side of uh, Jeskai Super Friends, like Fires. Okay, another Temple's fine. Okay, so we got Doom Foretold, which is nice. It's fun when not everyone is on it. Like I tried, like I usually play on my laptop at night, like while we watch Netflix or, or stuff. And like even in Best of One, the games take forever to play. I'm sorry, I'm just going to turn on the light in my room. So you know it's really good against these creature decks? Cry Carnarium. Because even if they sack, it's when they die, so they all get exiled. So they can get a Witch's Oven. Just to get the food tokens. I just pass the turn. Yep. Opponent didn't realize the exile component of it. Um, a really good card in the mirror is um, Kenrith. So yesterday, opponent had me dead. In one turn, I was able to Golos to find my fourth field, Kenrith, and give it all haste and hit them for 32. Um, so it's a good way to kind of beat them at their own game. So it's just setting up the bell haunt here. 
Um, there's not really much value in Doom Foretold right now. If they play out like a creature, then I'll do it because they can't sack the food tokens to it. That's fine. Okay, I'll get uh, Doom Foretold going now. Uh, no, not everyone. Some will run Beanstalk Giant, uh, others. Um, they'll run four of the Realm Cloak. I run, um, whatchamacallit. Uh, so I even play a Kenrith in my Jeskai Fires list. It's a good mana sink to gain you life and draw you cards. But in Golos, it's a way to give all your stuff haste. So they opt to not get rid of the Witch's Oven, which is interesting. So I get rid of Othakaya here. Um, I kind of want to keep this more than I want to keep the Murderous Rider right now. And second Doom Foretold doesn't really help, so I'm just going to play this out. Because I want him to sack the Witch's Oven to get that off the battlefield. And then get this to flip the Jurassic card. card. Because this is a good piece, like all those small creatures they had, they can't really attack into us. Mind you, with us controlling the board like this, I think we might... Okay, so they have Mayhem Devil. Um, let's go... Doesn't matter here. I'm going to set up two Doom Foretolds here. Okay, we got an egg, which is nice. These stack, so you get to do both. I'm going to hold the land uh, for Rankle. <laughs> uh, yeah, um... We're gonna take a little bit of damage, but they gotta sack the Mayhem Devil as well. So they might spend mana and just gain a bunch of life and then ping us for damage, which is what it looks like they're doing. But I get to sack these next turn and then sack these. So like Rankle could draw him a card, because okay, so they got another Mayhem Devil. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's a cool kind of like Staxy, not make your opponent do what they want to do list. Okay, so sack that. So Devil gets to deal us some damage. Um, I think we keep the Revenge of the... F nah, it's fine. I want to get two draws. Stax is like an old kind of name for an archetype in which uh, you kind of put... So it's, it's named after the card called Smokestack. Oh, sh we shouldn't have played the land in case they had Rankle. Um, so Smokestack made your opponent like keep stuff tapped down. So it's kind of like when you hear Prison Decks or Lock Decks, it's usually what it refers to. Okay, so it's not terrible. Um, we have a flyer here, but then they can do that with you. Uh, the Mayhem Devil's sack trigger. So we're a little. Oh, they don't have mana for Rankle this turn, so we're okay. So both of those. So we got one. So we attack in. Uh, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, 
five. So we'll still do X six so we get the creatures. One, two, three, four, five. And then one of these will sack. But we get um, the card draw and we can just do it again next turn. So even against a, like a Mayhem Devil deck, we're still able to get quite a bit of advantage against them. And they're pretty much dead on board at this point. Uh, we will sack Golden Egg, opponent GG's us. They can't, they basically can't play spells at this point. So we got him that way, took him out. So we're actually 2-0 and with the list. Uh, I'm gonna play a best of one, uh, just to get the feel there. So we beat, what did we beat game one? We bet uh, black green mid range. I'm just gonna reset arena cause it's already locked out my computer once. So we'll get that fired up again. How's everyone doing today? I've uh, gotten up to Platinum, what am I at? Platinum 3, I was kind of brewing a bit yesterday. I was playing some uh, Gruel, like Gruel Haste. I started off 4-0, then lost 5, and then kind of just played 500. Uh, it's good to kind of get under people. Um, so let's do one more play. Uh, let's do a, let's try a Ranked with it. See how we do in the Golos matchup. Actually, no, let's not do ranked because this deck sucks. So main board, this deck sucks in best of one. Um, so I wouldn't suggest playing it in a best of one. The reason it sucks is because you're going to run into Golos and the zombies don't sack the Golos. Uh, that's why we have uh, that other enchantment in the sideboard, the Prey one, uh, that deals damage when they attack. Uh, to offset the fact that the goblins or the, the zombies will be attacking into us. You don't want the triple dance of the man's hand, I can tell you that. Um, I'm gonna keep we're on the play, but I'll probably put Seraph back. We're going to enforce her on two. I like Kai's Wrath if we're against an aggressive deck. And if not, Doom Foretold can start doing what he needs to do. So this is Jeskai, likely. Okay, so second Doom Foretold is not the best. Kind of wish we kept Seraph. So this is Jeskai Fires. So this will be an interesting deck for us to go against. So I want to save this Othakaya in case they play like a Teferi or a Narset. I want to be able to kill it with a down tick. So same with Sahili. Actually. This is just a clean answer. So they basically can't play out less than one spell per turn. I have Othakaya next turn. This will get sacked. So they could Doom Foretold, that's fine. I'm not even going to kill Teferi because I want to keep uh, the Doom Foretold up. That'll kill it. I want him to sack and then keep them under lock because they can't play. Seems wrong not taking out Teferi. Well, the thing is then this just pops off. Uh, they would have sacked it anyways. We would have played it. Yeah, it forces us to sack it. So 
So here. Um, so we can oath, but I don't think, or actually. Oh, why did we pass through our turn? Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah crap, now this gets sacked. Damn it! That is not what I wanted to do. And then they got Sarkin. Okay, so I misplayed there. I wanted to attack, get them to bait, and then Othakaya, which then would have at least allowed us. Let's run that back. That was an error. Fat fingers. Um, let's keep this. Probably just Cove on one. Gives us the most idea. Or us on one, see what they're dealing with. Okay, so same matchup. Aether Gust does literal nothing against us, so let's take Teferi. Would like to see some cheap artifacts so we can get the lock going. So this is Sifka's list, um, where he plays the four Aether Gust main as a hedge to the aggressive decks. These Kaya's Wraths have very little utility in this matchup, unless they start one for one with Bone Crusher Giants. Okay, so we have Murderous Rider. Not bad. So they didn't shock us. Ideally they play something like a Narset here. Okay, they don't have anything. It's actually pretty good. Now is it? Because they just shock it. I, I think we get... Nah, let's do this. Because if they have fires down, they're playing two spells anyways. It, this gets it out of their hand, and they might commit to, to the board after fires, if they have it. Yeah, so they don't even care about Orzhov Enforcer. So this is just them digging for some sort of action. Enforcer could come down and attack at least. It's not the best clock, but it's something. Their hand was pretty bad without Teferi. Okay, so let's just get this. This is another thing we can sack. I was hoping for a land there so we could hold up Rider. So they have the option to scry each turn. Cavalier. Okay, so this is the creature-based version, which is actually pretty good for us. So they can get haste out of nowhere. Uh, we'll keep another egg. Eggs are basically fodder for us at this point. No attacks. And then it makes this Dance of the Mance a lot better. I want to hold this back for Cavalier. So that shuffles back into the library. Mm. 
but if they kind of go off with Cavaliers, we have the Kaya's Wrath. Next turn, I can Egg and Murderous Rider. They're spending each turn just Cavaliering. Like, they should be able to sculpt their hand, but they can't really play a Fires down. Unless they have something to back it up, but then this Murderous Rider just kills the second thing, and then they lose the Fires. So Seraph's actually pretty good. This gets him to sack that. So the worst would be a Teferi, because then it locks out the Murderous Rider, and then they could bounce the Doom Foretold. Well, they're just going Cavaliers on us. The Seraph is a way we can start pushing through. And I don't want to offer the trade um, because they're waiting for this Doom Foretold to come off so they can commit more to the board. Okay, so we got Tranquil Cove. This all makes the dance for the man's better. They are getting to the point where they can multi-spell as well. So Cavalier goes away. Seraph's also very bad against the fairies. This talk ability is really annoying. I've killed like four of these, but they just keep coming back. When you have four in the deck and they all find each other. Okay, they bought them two. You're going to see another Cavalier. Okay, go fires here. I go to fairy. It'd be interesting to see what they do here. Like they could bounce a creature. Okay. They don't realize we have Murderous Rider in hand, so they get rid of their fires at least. So we'll sack Seraph, we get the two tokens. We unfortunately do not have haste. Play out the Orzhov Enforcer. Get rid of Teferi. Now we can just poke in for a couple damage each turn. We'd like to get a couple more uh, things into the graveyard to get back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or another land actually gets us there. That gives us eight so we could dance. We gotta get rid of fires, which is nice. Interesting they're not cracking these. Just thins out your deck at this point. We go fires. So 
So I'm probably gonna Kaya's Wrath, to be honest. <clears throat> I could Kaya's Wrath and play Murderous Rider, so I'll attack in. It's because I'm sacking the Enforcer this turn. And that gets rid of the Fires of Invention. And that will be two Fires gone. So they can Scry now. Sack. 40 cards, 43. These games definitely do go long, that's the only thing. Hopefully Arena doesn't crash again. So let's get rid of the Enforcer. So we got another egg, which is equally as good. It's a free block. These wraths won't be the most utility. They also have two lands in the graveyard. We need to be mindful of Red Cavalier. Uh, deals damage equal to cards in, uh, lands in your graveyard. So I'm going to do this because it's better with Dance of the Mans in hand. Cool. Got our land. So that's eight lands so we can dance in another turn. Two in the grave, that'll be three, and then we do a doom foretold. So it's a fairy. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I also have enough for doom foretold. Oh, I've done the hero thing. That's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have to sack our own. So I can play this, because if we draw land, we can still do it. Okay, we don't. So it's one, two, so we can do it for four. One, two, three, four. Get a whole bunch back. Just play out the land, because here they sack the Teferi. They'll attack us with Cavalier, but I have Kai's Wrath to clean up the board of creatures. And I don't think they can necessarily... They could play Red Cavalier, but I don't think they could combo us. They go Drawn. If not, I'll probably Oath and Bell Hunt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nah, we probably Kaya's Wrath. We can take five. It's not that bad. That's just more fuel for them. Because I do like what Doom Foretold's doing in terms of locking them. Just in 
case we need to gain the life. Okay, so we could double with the Kaya here. So at least this gets rid of it. They've cast these Cavaliers so many times. At this point, we just want to try to get um, a dance out. And then I can play the Orzhov Enforcer, just try to get some chip damage in. This is basically what you want to try to do with the deck, just lock your opponent. So we got them in a state where they can't really commit to multiple things per turn. Um, even if they drop a fires, we've gone through a good chunk of our deck. If we draw a second Doom Foretold, it's a nice lock. Another uh, Dance of the Mans would be nice. But you just basically want to insulate your life total and then drop down uh, like a Niv Visit in the main. That is actually terrifying. And they go Bone Crusher. Um, let's just get rid of an egg here. Okay, so we draw the land. Not really what we want to see here. Um, okay, I could get them to commit a bit more to the board and then we Kaya's Wrath, which is probably where I want to be. I don't think they could beat us just yet, which is the important thing. Because usually these Jeskai lists don't play too much in terms of like card draw. They also have Gaither Gust that just doesn't do anything. And like they could. Okay, so. They might have Clarion here. And then I'll get him some life. Fires. So if they just fires Clarion, I'm okay with that, because then we just, yeah, we just Kaya's Wrath this Niv away. <laughs> and they can't play any more spells this turn, and then that will get them to sack the Fires of Invention. No blocks. Interesting that we see uh, Niv in these lists. Okay, so another Orzhov Enforcer. So they do get to draw a card. It does take fires out of their hand. Got 30 cards. We need a Dance of the Mance. Some eggs. Drawn a lot of lands. It's part of the reason like Teferi's very good too. You could bounce your own eggs to get a uh, redraw. Don't want to commit the Murderous Rider because both would get swept up by a Clarion. Six cards.
Damn, this game's going on long. We got Bone Crusher. So as long as they can play with multiple spells, they do get us, but Dance of the Man should be what we're looking for. Um, let's sack the... Probably the Othakaya, the reason being uh, this small backwater is not where we want to be. Um, let's just do Murderous Rider. So they don't have the Scry. Uh, they showed Clarion. They Clarion with Niv Mizzet out to sweep us. Um, I also don't want to attack with the Enforcer because then it dies and I don't get the token and I don't get it to be sacked. I want to keep enough fodder out for this Doom Foretold to at least keep them locked until we can get uh, the Dance of the Mance. Yeah, so we got punished there. I do get the block at least to save five life. Because what I have one, one, two, three, four, five. Got five in there. Yeah, Cavalier is bad. And Arena starting to leg hard. Discard those lands, which is just more damage on the flip side. Oh, that's actually very cool. Shows you how many lands. So we got two pumps here. So I just block the most damage. Dance of the Man, Sir Kaya's Wrath. Dance or Kaya. I don't know why they're not. We're dead unless we draw Dance or Kaya. Uh, not quite the Kaya I wanted. Does gain us some life. So they got a sack. If they sack Cavalier of Gales, this could pump multiple times. And then they lose it when it comes down the next turn. And then they deal... So they have one pump, two pump, three pump, four pump, five pump, like six pumps. So it's 12 damage plus the damage from the Lions. So I might actually have to sack Doom Foretold here. That's if they don't, but then they can give a haste if they have another Cavalier, which is what it looks like they have. Yeah. That should be lethal. One, two, three. Like is plus six, that's 11, 17 damage. Wish Arena would show you what card's on top of your library. Oh yeah, we're dead. Show me the haste, show me the haste. Uh, we had a couple turns. We had a couple turns where we could have drawn Matt Dance. The Fairy would have also been pretty good in a couple of these matchups. Yeah, they got it. Good game, opponent. That one was tough. It's actually the first time I've played Cavalier uh, Fires. I usually play the Planeswalker version. Uh, Othakai is not as good in this matchup when they have 5-5s. Five Anyways, that's pretty much the deck. We've played about an hour and a half, actually, of the deck. So, good feel for it.
Um, so I'll have this up on YouTube if you missed any part of it, and I'll be back with the non-budget version, uh, throw some Teferis in there, and then take it from that point. I uh, appreciate those tuning in. If you do have any questions, drop them in the YouTube comments, and we can go from there. Otherwise, have a good day or night, and thanks for tuning in.